What's going on guys? Jordan for Flyers here and I am bringing you episode number 20 of the Pokemon Diamond Randomizer Nuzlocke. In the previous episode, we took down the third gym of the game in, in Veilstone City. And we could have left it at that, but instead I had to go and do one more battle, which was a double battle with Dawn and her golem. And that resulted in probably the most catastrophic of battles that we have had so far, in which we lost two of our greatest team members. It was a sad, sad day. Uh, in this episode, we are going to go into the Pokemon Center. <laughs> uh, we are going to go south of Veilstone City. We are now heading towards Pastoria City, where the fourth gym is. So, first of all, let's hop right into a team recap. You kind of got a glimpse there of what my uh, two new team members were, but anyways. Up first, we have our starter, Totem the Executor. I am totally going to call it Totem the Execute at some point. I know that I am. <laughs> nope, uh, it is Executor now. Holding that Mind Plate, Gentle Nature with Chlorophyll, and Bullet Seed, Leech Seed, Sleep Powder, and Psychic. We have Len, our Superstar Sneasel, Bashful Nature with Kenai, holding that Lock Incense with Faint Attack, Cut, Icy Wind, and Screech. We have the Godsend herself, Flem the Weezing, holding that Poison Barb, Hasty Nature with Levitate, and Sludge, Brine, Assurance, and Smokescreen. Uh, whoops. Uh, we have Tit Duck the Magmar, uh, holding that Flame Plate, Quiet Nature with Flame Body, and Ember, Smokescreen, Faint Attack, and Fire Punch. I hadn't really registered that he has Flame Body, which is kind of awesome. And I'm pretty sure Flame Body is one of those abilities that uh, lets eggs hatch faster. So when we finally get to getting the Riolu egg, that'll be amazing to have. Anyways, we have brought Diego back to the team for now because um, I've kind of mentioned that Diego is going to be my HM slave. And I do believe there's going to be places coming up that I'll need Rock Smash for. So... That's why Diego is there, but I mean, I could use it as well. Diego is strong enough. Uh, holding that lung, luck incense as well. Naughty nature with intimidate and strength, lick, bite, and rock smash. And our newest team member is Ares the Hoot Hoot. Holding that EXP share for now, although I imagine by the end of this episode, it will have leveled up with the rest of our team, or at least close to. Uh, calm nature. I can't remember off the top of my head what Calm does, but I think... I'm spitballing here, but I think it is increased special defense and decreased attack, but I'm going to double check that right now. And I am absolutely correct. Yeah, Calm Nature is increased special defense and decreased physical attack, which, eh, it's not the greatest thing, but I think Noctowl is more of a special attacker, if I'm not mistaken, but I could very well be mistaken. Anyways, Keen Eye as well with Fly, Hypnosis, Peck, and Reflect. Yeah, Hoot Hoot was able to learn Fly, and now that we have the third, gy the third gym badge, we can use that to, uh, you know, fast travel to places and stuff. But we are going to start making our way south of Veilstone City now, where we are going to be able to get a couple of encounters right away here. So, first of all, uh, first of all, trainer. Uh, so we have Route 214 here, which I will write down right now. Route 214. Okay. Uh, Oddish, that is going to be extremely easy. So, yeah. Uh, there's Route 214. There is the Ruin Maniac Cave, uh, which... I, I believe there's also a TM in the Rune Mani Maniac Cave, so TMs are always exciting to see what they are. You know, on top of the encounter. And Ares will grow a little bit, not gain any levels yet. Oh boy! Oh boy, that's an Arceus. Okay. Uh, I'm going to rely on Phlegm for this one. Um... I seem to remember that Arceus knows Earth Power by level up, but uh, Phlegm does have Levitate, so I don't need to worry about that. And I think Phlegm, for the most part, is the most defensive Pokemon that I have. Jeez, just 
Oh, that's not great. Okay, I might actually switch out now, because if it does in fact have uh, Earth Power, Flam's not going to enjoy that too much. Oh, that awesome poison. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to switch out into Len. I don't think Arceus gets fighting moves or anything similar. I could theoretically switch into Totem too. I think I'm going to do that, actually. A Psychic from Totem should actually finish this thing off after the poison damage it takes this turn. Punishment? Ow! Ow, ow, ow. Okay, a critical hit will kill me. Uh, now I'm gonna switch into land. <laughs> I'm not enjoying punishment. Why does this person just straight up have God? <laughs> okay, oh jeez, even a punishment does, like, in, in a way more than it should, but I think a faint attack should finish it off. Kaboop. Even God gets kabooped. And, oh, not quite, but the poison will finish it off. There's the earth power! Okay! I'm glad I switched out a totem. This might still hurt, though. It's, it does a little bit. But that will finish off the Arceus. I'm very glad I did get that poison off. Whew! Gotta love starting off with God. <laughs> Alright, and Kingdra again. Oh, now I don't have Dragon Pulse. That's annoying. I'm just gonna use Phlegm. Phlegm should be good enough to take this thing down. With a sludge or two. And I feel I must mention again, I really want a Kingdra on my team. Not only just because I like Kingdra, but because Water and Dragon are both very nice things to have on my team right now. Because I don't really have an answer to dragon types right now besides Icy Wind, and that's not really going to do much. And Poison again. I love it. And I've been saying for a while that I really need water coverage on my team, and Brian on Weezing is not really cutting it. So, we do have two encounters coming up pretty much, pretty much immediately after this battle. Ow! That might hurt a little bit. Not too much, I don't imagine. Okay. So yeah, after this Kingdra is officially disposed of, I'm gonna run back and heal because that Arceus did a number to a few of my team. And we will return. Oh, level up for Ares. Uh, yeah, we will return and pick up those encounters. I'm excited. Oh, time to get some berries, okay. Uh, I don't really know what this one is, so I'm just gonna guess Qualot again, because that's my go-to. Oh, that's Cherry, okay. Um, I will say Citrus, I believe? Yeah! Okay. Uh, this next one is... I'm going to guess... Chesto. Yeah! Nice! Uh, and that is Pomeg, I believe the other one is. Yes! Okay. I love my berry guessing game, I'm sorry. Just indulge me for a bit. Okay. Our Route 214 encounter is going to be... Lucario, baby! Oh, that is amazing. Okay. If I can capture this thing, that is amazing. Because I do really want a fighting type back on my team and... The added steel to that would uh, greatly help. So we're going to put this thing to sleep real quick and see what kind of damage we can do. Okay, I might be okay to start throwing balls now. Let's just see how one or two goes. I'm scared of doing one more bit of bullet seed because if I get five rounds of bullet seed on one turn, that might finish it off, which I do not want, so... I'll try, let's say I'll try three Pokeballs, this being the second, and then we will try a Bullet Seed if we need to. But this one seems to be working. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, what a lot of people consider to be the poster child of fourth generation. And I intend to throw that on my team, to be honest. The Aura Pokemon. 
Um, I'm thinking of an X-Men character right now. The one that, like, that can, like, kind of tell, like, what your feelings are and... What the hell is that person's name? I'm trying to think. Give me a sec. Okay, so... Under the wiki for X-Men Mutant Abilities, apparently the known users of people who, like, feel or sense the emotions of others are Cupids, Coop Empaths, Phoebe Hallowell, and Phoenix Force. Um, I, I kind of like Coop for a male Lucario, so I'm gonna go with Coop. Okay. I plan on immediately putting Lucario onto my team, by the way. Another Toxic Plate. Okay. So, we are now going to head straight into the Ruin Maniac Cave. Uh, talk with the guy in here. He doesn't really tell you anything useful. Just kind of what he is and what he kind of wants you to do. But we don't really have the... Uh, uh, we don't really have the opinion of catching Unknown in a randomizer. So... I, I sure won't be catching the unknown, but what is this TM? Glare. Yay. Well, I mean, it's a source of paralysis, so, I mean, that's not the worst thing. Okay. Uh, I just want to double check that this is, in fact, called Ruin Maniac Cave. Yes, it is. Okay. Our encounter, eventually, our encounter for Ruin Maniac Cave is going to be Cheruby. Uh, that is sure a typing that I don't need. But, you know. In the spirit of Nuzlocke, we will capture this thing. So, we'll be back in, when this is in red health. Okay, if I was able to catch a Lucario when it was in yellow health and sleeping, then I should certainly able to be able to catch a uh, Cherubi in the same. One, two, three. Gotcha. All right. And, uh, n you know, now we name this thing. So, as per usual, I will name it as if it was a Cherim and not a Cherubi. Um, and I have no idea what to name a Cherim, so give me a dang second. Okay, I can't really think of a fancy name for this thing, so we're just gonna call it a actual name. Uh, I will call it Daphne. Daphne the Truby getting sent straight to the PC. Okay, uh, I am going to head back and throw Lucario onto the team. Okay, so on top of putting Lucario on the team, I gave him the luck incense for now. But let's take a look at our new Lucario. So, it is naive nature. I feel like I've been over what that is before, and I don't really feel like remembering what it is. It's something to do with special defense and speed, though. I hope it's the speed increasing one, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, inner focus with counter, force palm, faint, and bone rush. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we sure do have a Lucario now, and I am super happy about that. Are there any hidden items in here? I seem to think that there are, but nope. Okay. Are there any here? Nope. Uh, oh, right, I need to, I took Gramble off the team in favor of, um, what's his face, Lucario. Uh, the funny thing is, Hoot Hoot is also able to learn Rock Smash, so that's kind of tempting to do instead, to be honest. I'll teach it to Lucario for now, though, because it is Stab. I might as well. It's better than Faint. Kind of. Okay. So, there's, like, four or five trainers to take on on this route, and then, uh, the, we might be able to get another encounter in this episode. If not, it will certainly be at the beginning of next episode. For now, we're worrying about more trainers. Uh, the thing with, uh, Working on my Pokemon right now, though, is that the next gym has the exact same levels as Veilstone did. Like, uh, Crasher Wake's Ace is also going to be level 33. 
So, there's not much of a need to fight all the trainers now. But at the same time, while I'm here, I might as well. Just get it out of the way now. Like, if we ever need to grind, I don't mind just going through a whole bunch of wild Pokemon instead of, like, taking on trainers that I haven't taken on before. I prefer doing trainers, like, on screen. I don't know, it's just a personal preference of mine. Goodbye, the Munchlax. I would like to throw in Lucario against something if I could. Uh, Wartortle. Uh, I might just stay in on that, to be honest. Yeah. There will come a time where Lucario will be thrown right into a battle, though. But while these guys are, like, over-leveled of what Lucario is, I'm, like, nervous. I'd rather not get and lose a Lucario in the exact same episode. Okay, the War Turtle was absolutely no difficulties, and is the next thing going to be a thing that I can use Lucario with? That I can force pump the absolute shit out of. <laughs> uh, Ares continues to grow. Ammonite. I would much rather just... Well, I, I guess that should be okay. Theoretically. Let's try it out. Trying out our, our new Lucario. Come on out, Coop. I, I would have stayed in under normal circumstances and just bullet seeded this thing, because, you know, gotta love experience on Totem, but let's just see how much a Forest Palm does. Pachoo! I doubt it's a one shot. It is absolutely a one shot if it's a critical hit. Okay! <laughs> nice! Coop's first battle, and it's a one shot. Love it. You get that experience, Coop. Okay, I believe there is one more- Oh! Well, first of all, there's an evolution! Okay! You go right ahead and evolve there, uh, Hoot Hoot. Um, not to worry, I did take a quick look at what, like, the level-up movesets of Hoot Hoot and Noctowl were, and there's really no difference, except, like, Noctowl can learn more things. So, it's just, it's kind of better to let it evolve as soon as possible. So that's what I did. High encounter. What is going on, Starmie? Okay, Lucario has been thrown to the front of the party. Um, I know that there is a hidden item in that little blank patch of not grass down there. But first, we fight an artist with a ground on! Oh my! I mean, thank goodness it's only level 23, but holy crap, that's a ground on! Okay, um, what do we use? I'm slightly scared of fire moves here, so I think phlegm is my best option, and at least it's immune to any ground moves that this thing would want to throw at me. Oh, that's gonna double hurt, actually. Please do not get the boost. Thank you. Okay, as long as I can survive this ancient power, which I, I, I should. Yeah, it d wasn't doing too much. Brian was surprisingly effective against this thing, because doesn't drought, like, power down water moves? I, I feel like Brian was doing as much as it should have been doing anyways. So, whatever, I'll take it. I took down a Groudon, and Flynn is my first level 31, so yay. And Ares the Noctowl continues to grow. And what other amazing Pokemon? Centret. Okay, you are getting immediately force palmed. I hear you like fists. That wasn't a fist, that was a palm. I'm never mind. Goodbye, Centret. <laughs> I'm four levels below you, and you still get obliterated. Nice. And stupid sunlight. I mean, if anything feels like coming out with a fire move right now, that would not be Stori blah, 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 Storavia, by the way. Um, I think we're going to use Tip Duck. And we're going to punch the heck out of this bird. I think that's about what's going to happen. Come on out. Let me turn you into some roast chicken. Or bird or quail or whatever kind of bird you're meant to be. I don't really know. I was debating whether to use Ember or Fire Punch, but considering he intimidated me, 
Ember was no difficulty either way. So, yeah, goodbye. I am seven levels above the thing, so... I don't know why I would expect otherwise. Goodbye, Artist Lawrence. And am I gonna be able to get down to this item? I think I'm gonna spray a repel real quick. Um, I really don't feel like encountering a whole bunch of things right now. So, yeah. Let's get it. Hey. It is a dragon fang. Okay. That's interesting, I guess. Who is bothering me? What's up, Onyx? Moving on. Uh, see, like, I seem to remember that there is a hidden item, like, somewhere in a fan like those. I don't know. It's gonna bother me, but I need to try and not be so anal about trying to get all the hidden items, because the clicking gets slightly annoying when it's, like, so audible in the video. Sometimes it's audible. Uh, this Meowth is seven levels above me, but I don't imagine it would have anything horrendous. So I'm just gonna Force Palm. See what this thing does. Fury Swipes shouldn't hurt too much. Yeah. Gotta love that random Steel type on Lucario. That's one of those kind of uh, controversial things that uh, people on the internet really don't agree with, that Lucario being a Steel type is kind of weird. And I agree, it is. Like, the only thing that is steel on Lucario is, like, the horns on his fists. So, I don't really understand why he is, in fact, a steel type. But, I mean, he is. So, people gotta get used to that. Okay, gonna go up the other way. And we go this way now. What's up? Fight me. I know there's definitely, like, a couple of hidden items going down this right side of Route 214. Strongman Joe, that sure is not a strongman Pokemon. <laughs> this thing's gonna get obliterated. Okay, might I point out that this is still the first turn of Bone Rush actually hitting, and that is five hits right there. <laughs> Goodbye, Spinarak. Love it. Coop grows... Actually, Coop doesn't grow way too slowly. That's a Heatran. Uh, I'm not staying in against this thing. Not risking Bone Rush, considering, like, that is probably the best move I have. Uh, I don't have much for a Heatran. And Heatran probably has, like, Earth Power or Ancient Power or something like that, so I don't feel safe putting in Tit Duck. I think Phlegm continues to be my best choice against these incredible legendaries. But I will Super Potion it, at least, because Phlegm's damage right now is a little frightening. But I don't know 100% what Heatran's level up moveset is like, so I'm not too sure what it'll have. Oh, it does have Ancient Power. Okay, so yeah, I'm glad I didn't throw in Magmar. Ow! Okay, I am super happy right now because one Brine did just over half damage, so I guess Brine does have its uses. Nice. Goodbye, Heatran. All that stuff that I was saying, like, a couple episodes ago about, like, Brine being a weird move... I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of over it already. <laughs> Beautifly, you can get fire punched. I hear you like fire. Goodbye, Beautifly. Um, another thing I kind of forgot to mention last episode, which I will kind of slightly mention now, is I did buy TMs for Stone Edge. Um, I think the only other TM that I bought from the department store was the one that I thought was like Recover or something. Uh, that ended up to be Wish, actually. So, it's not exactly what I thought it was, but it's still a recovering move, which is, I guess, something to think about. Clearly. Um, so, I haven't checked the compatibility of Stone Edge yet, but if someone can learn that, that might be a decent thing to put onto the team. I don't imagine Glalie can hurt a Lucario. I don't know. We'll see. Glalie can certainly survive a Force Palm from a Lucario. That's not going to do too much. Okay. Yeah, this Glalie is going to die very easily. Goodbye, Glalie. No problems whatsoever. And if this were a true collector, there would be two more Glalies behind you. But no, that's not how randomizers work. Coop finally gains first level. Nice, 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 nice. Ares grows another level. 
Aries is starting to climb a bit. Aries is learning confusion. I will absolutely teach you confusion. Uh, I don't really feel the need for reflect. So, meh. <laughs> reflect has its comp uh, competitive uses, but not worried about it. Gardevoir. Um, what do I have for a psychic type? I have Len. Yeah, I, I sure do have Len. I'm sure one, maybe two faint attacks will finish this, this, this thing off. Why does my talking ability suck today? Here comes a Kaboop. The Kaboop hasn't been doing nearly as much as I wish it would these days, but hopefully it can one shot a Gardevoir. Okay, love it. Gardevoir usually is a threat, but to not today. And, oh, hey. What's going on, other Len? Okay, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna force palm the heck out of this thing. So, other Len, I hear you like fighting moves. <laughs> oh, this Sneasel did not stand a single bit of a chance. Goodbye. Uh, after this battle, I'm gonna run back and heal because once again, a few of my Pokemon are slightly injured. So, yeah, gonna head back right about now. Okay, so fun fact, um, on top of healing, I went to the uh, department store to pick up some more things, and I didn't realize the department store sells, like, pretty much everything. So they sold Great Balls and Ultra Balls, which I bought some of. They sold Max Repels, which I bought some of. And they sold uh, Super Potions and Hyper Potions. I'm not worried about Super Potions. or No, I'm not worried about Hyper Potions just yet. I did buy uh, a few more of the super variety, though. Uh, Rhydon, I th think, should go down to some brines. Rhydon doesn't have Mold Breaker, does it? I don't think it does. I wasn't paying attention to the beginning of the battle, so I didn't see if, like, it said it, it broke the mold or whatever the heck it said. But anyways, this thing should go down to a brine or two. Oh, wow, it did take one brine. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Goodbye, Rhydon. Coop continues to grow. Flem continues to grow. Ares continues to grow, uh, uh, outpacing everyone else. And that is one single rich kid Jimmy. The the female Jimmy. Um, any hidden item? Oh, there is. Right here. There is a heat rock. Uh... I think what that does is, like, out, uh, increases the duration of Sunny Day, if I'm not mistaken. That's what I seem to remember. Anyways, I'm never going to use it. <laughs> it's a thing that I can sell, as far as I'm concerned. Ivysaur, you don't pose too much of a threat to Lucario, I don't think. So I should be okay to stay in and Bone Rush. Okay, the stupid Ivysaur put Lucario to sleep, so that's why Titduck is in here finishing the job. Goodbye, Ivysaur. I'm I'm happy to have Magmar on my team. And, you know, very soon to be Magmortar. That is a very, very nice thing to have on the team. Espeon, I am absolutely lenning the heck out of you. <laughs> I don't know if one Kaboop is going to do it, but let's see. There's, there's a chance. Uh, all right. Look at Len coming through. After the incredible losses of last episode, Len is back to his superstar status. And I, I'm i pretty sure there's only like one or two more trainers, if any, left. So uh, I am quite sure that there is a hidden item to be had right here. I am spraying a repel after we run away from this outish. Okay, let's see what we got. We got a nugget! Yay! A thing that we can just exclusively sell and, you know, nothing else. Okay. Oh, there's a trainer right there, but let's get the item up here first. Excuse me, I have a rappel up, Mr. Caesar! Or Mrs. Caesar! <laughs> okay, so I took that Caesar as an opportunity to wake up Lucario and kill it, and Lucario did gain a level from it and wanted to learn Metal Sound. I don't really have any special attacks, also high Gastrodon. So, I, I didn't have Lucario learn Metal Sound. And this Gastrodon is going to get murdered by Executor. 
And that time it was Ares gaining a level. Um, to repel. I'm gonna take a look around here because I seem to remember there being a hidden item in this little patch here, as well as an actual item, but... Oh, yay, energy powder. So useful. Okay, is there anything around here? Not too, too sure, but I... I seem to remember there being something. But, you know, I, I'm known to be wrong, so let's just go fight this one last trainer here. Hi! What does this particular artist collector person have? Probably a Lugia. Or an Octillery. Okay, this is easy. Yeah, the Octillery was absolutely no problem. Okay, there we go. Now it was no problem. <laughs> Spoke just a tad bit too soon. Totem might gain a level from this, but that's a huge might because of all the split experience. And up next, we have a good old-fashioned Nidoran that is going to get psychic to death. Hello, Lizzie. Bajow. That is not the sound effect for psychic. Bajow. No. It's not happening. Goodbye, Lizzie. Totem still does not gain that level. Let's see if this Pokemon can do it. Uh, do I feel safe staying in is actually the question. Which, I don't know, I kind of don't. I'm just gonna throw in Len. Len should be okay to take down a Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto, I'm fairly certain, doesn't get, like, anything except normal and flying moves. So, I don't feel overly threatened. And here comes a Kaboop! Down goes Dat Pidgeotto. And Len should get... Well, Len will absolutely gain a level from this. Uh, I, I guess I didn't have Totem in for this battle, right? So, I guess Totem won't. Ares shouldn't. Okay. So, I'm gonna run back and heal real quick, and we are going to do one more thing in this episode. And that is, we are going to get our Valor Lakefront encounter, and that is going to be... Huntail! I mean, I keep saying over and over again that I need some kind of water on my team, so that's not the worst thing. So, we'll be back when this thing is in red health. Okay, a whole bunch of the team has chipped in to damage this thing, so let's see if it can be captured now. Uh, I... The theme for today is capturing things in yellow health while they're asleep. So, <laughs> let's make it three for three on that, hopefully. Pokeball the second. Let's work just a little bit better. Two... Three. We have finally caught a water type! After like 30 some encounters, we have finally caught a water type. Okay, what do we name a Huntail? Um, you know what? Huntail is the thing that killed. My prime ape. Uh, so I'm reminded of things that kill gorillas, and I'm reminded of Tarzan. So I'm going to call this Huntail Clayton. I think this is how you spell Clayton. I think that's what we're gonna go with. Okay, I will debate between episodes whether or not to put Huntail onto the team, but that is going to put an end to today's episode. So in the next episode, we are going to continue on through Valor Lakefront and through, I believe, Route 213 uh, before we finally make it to Pastoria City. So I imagine in two episodes' time, we're going to be able to take down the fourth gym of the game. So, thank you guys for watching, and let's have more fun next time!